How's it going, Teal Boys? It is the off season, and I think that this is going to be a short episode. We're just going to go through our off season changes uh, this year. Uh, you know, we, I don't like to see the coaching care, so it takes too long. We're going to advance straight to players leaving, and then take a look at what coaching changes we've seen. Hopefully, we haven't lost our coordinators, and if we have, hopefully, we got good coordinators to replace them. So we can go ahead and go into the coaching changes and see okay Appalachia state has renewed their stuff let's go into the sun belt just to see what's happened with us first do we have anything good uh we extended both of our coordinators and i'm fairly certain that i got extended so that's uh, or i guess we didn't even have to worry about anything so we have kept the coaching regime intact which is great now we'll go through and see if there's any crazy uh coaching changes uh luke fickle right off the bat going to cal in place of justin wilcox uh jeff brom to ulm is an interesting one todd graham is now at tennessee joe moorhead is the new head coach of cincinnati justin wilcox who was fired from cal has made it to new mexico and there are a few coaches that have uh retired but Nothing too crazy this year. So I guess we can see our players leaving, and this is always kind of a sad moment for us as we get to lose a lot of talent, and I think some of it's going to be a, uh, pretty big. Uh, Braylon Ryan, a right end for us. He's a redshirt freshman, 69 overall, wants to transfer. I think I want to keep him around. He's the only person leaving that we won't have a, a good chance to, to keep around, and this is very low persuasion chance is rough. We're going to say you'll play more than six games. I don't like to make promises that I can't keep. And yeah, so we will lose the freshman right end from Greenwood, South Carolina. Javon Hiley is going to be going into the draft. The first player, I think, for us in this dynasty projected in the fourth round. The 91 overall wide receiver. Had a decent season. Um, 39 catches for 661 yards and five touchdowns this year. A little bit of a drop off from last year, uh, but he. Got better at catching the ball. Eight dropped passes last year, four this year. We're going to miss him. And so are we going to miss Massimo Biscardi, our kicker, 90 overall. Oh, what a shame. 21 of 23 on the year, 91% on his field goals, 95 on his career. Hit a 54-yarder this year, and the ones that he missed were very long. A perfect 100% uh, on all his extra points and plenty of touchbacks on the kickoffs as well. And we lose our two tight ends. Ooh, that's going to be tough to replace in uh, Michael McFarland and Isaiah Likely. Isaiah, an offensive captain. And, you know, stats-wise, it doesn't seem like he was great. A couple of touchdowns and three drops, but uh, I think he played a bigger role than it really shows. Now we go into uh, some secondary guys. How about this Derek Bush, the senior from Tucson, Arizona, our corner uh, four interceptions. I think that led the team with a pick six, seven deflections as well. Picked up a fumble. I mean, this guy's going to be hard to replace. 38 tackles, four for loss. Oh, it's it's going to be hard. I think that our secondary could definitely be worse. And we lose Jeffrey Gunter as well. Oh, this redshirt senior linebacker out of Durham, North Carolina. 81 tackles on the season, 22 for loss, five sacks. Uh, no interceptions, but he did force a fumble and recover a fumble. You know, just a force to be reckoned with. 81 tackles is a ton, and we lose to Jordan Strong to another senior. Uh, he had three interceptions on the season. Oh my gosh, it keeps getting worse. We also lose our starting safeties, uh, both of them, free and strong, Alex Spillum and Braden Matz. Spillum had a pick six, two interceptions, um, multiple tackles for loss, a bunch of tackles. Braden Matz, we know, had a, a, a clutch interception in one of our games and another 55 tackles there. Oh my gosh, a lot of other guys. Baden Pince in our backup running back will leave. And he didn't have a great season, 122 yards on 35 carries. That's something I want to figure out is that we're going to change um, how frequently we sub positions in and out because... Uh, I want to see our backups getting a little bit more playing time. And we lose our fullback as well in Shamari Jones. Uh, again, only three rushing attempts this season, but he had a touchdown. And 
uh, you know, we don't really use the fullback a ton, but it's always nice to have one, and you hate to see him go. So we lose just a ton of guys, and I guess we'll move on to the next stage, but that hurts. Hopefully somebody wants to transfer and come play for us. On the draft results, Javon does go in the fourth round, so that's good news for us. We finally get a guy into the NFL. And does anybody want to come play for us? Two guys, a freshman wide receiver from Florida. 79 overall is very good. He's absolutely going to come play for us. He will have to set out his season, uh, but that's fine because no matter what, he's going to be useful. He's a speed receiver. What are his stats look like? 94 speed, 88 acceleration, 78 catching is acceptable, decent route running. Uh, his release could be a little bit better, but otherwise, uh, I feel like it's a solid pickup, especially for a freshman. And then another freshman, this time coming from Georgia, will be the defensive tackle in John Taylor. Uh, 78 overall, balanced D tackle. Uh, he's not super quick, but he is a, you know, defensive lineman. 85 strength, 77 tackle. I like the power moves and finesse moves. Block shedding could be a little bit higher. That's at 77. Uh, but pretty solid again there. So we just got two great transfers. And now I guess we can just move on towards our recruiting and we can try to pick up some uh, some new guys. So in recruiting battles with a lot of these guys, uh, and likely I think that we're going to give every single one of our points to Brian Davis. The 76 overall defensive tackle. Right, that's what he is, a defensive tackle. Yeah, um, absolutely what we want. And maybe we go with... Oh, I forgot about Ashton Keith. We're still in this one as well. So maybe splitting the points. We're fighting with Rutgers with the D tackle and Notre Dame with the defensive end. But those could be two massive pickups that could probably play right away. Um, looking okay with Chad and Robert. Those would also be good pickups. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to give 500 to the 270 overall players. Just so that we can say, hey, look, we care about you. That's, a, that's like a whole week's worth of points. Um, and then we will split the rest of it between the two higher overall players. Try to make sure that we're picking up a lot. Um, I would rather have Ashton Keith, but I think it's going to be a harder get. So let's look at, do we go 4,000, 5,000? Or do we go 45 in each? Um, I think we'll go 4,000 to Brian Davis and 5,000 to Ash and Keith, and we'll hope that we get both of them and that we don't, uh, you know, you lose out on every single one of these guys. We do have nine scholarships remaining, so that's nothing that we have to worry about. I am curious, our pipeline status. Uh, we currently are fine keeping Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, and North Carolina. It doesn't look like we're going to uh, pick any new states up. I'm curious... We're looking at guys mostly from states that were already pipelined. A lot of kids from South Carolina, which is fine. Uh, but I'd like to extend that a little bit. Maybe we look towards getting, uh, you know, Texas or California pipelined. Because those could be massive and they create a bunch of really good recruits in this game. Before we go into our uh, national signing day, we'll see where we're standing. The 77th best class in the country. Eight three stars, four two stars, and two one stars. For a total of 14, uh, that goes up to 16 players with the two transfers that we got. And we just need to hope, I guess, that we... I mean, I think at one point I said top 50. Right now I'm thinking top 65 I would be happy with. So let's hope that we can pick up some good recruits here as we go into National Signing Day. What are we going to get? Oh, we miss out on Brian Davis. He goes to Rutgers. We miss out on Robert Harris as well. So both defensive tackles commit elsewhere. But we get Chad Bradshaw, the wide receiver, and we get the 79 overall right end in Ashton Keith. So two pickups. Do we get any lower overall guys? Okay, we get a corner in Sean Franklin, a left guard in Cole Lambert. That's nice. So a little bit of depth. We did a decent job picking up players. I think we picked up uh, with the... Um, transfers, like, 19 guys? I mean, three scholarships remaining tells me that a couple other guys signed as well. Uh, but we'll go ahead and... Can we look, uh, first off, what is our class ranked? We jump up to 66, so one off of the top 65 that we wanted. One four-star, ten three-stars, seven two, and two one. I like that we don't have a whole lot of one-star guys. 20 total guys signed, plus the two transfers, so 22. 
There we go. Figured out the math eventually. And how about the five stars in like the top class? Bamble with seven five stars is the top class. That is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and then we know that a bunch of teams had uh, a five star or multiple. Like this list goes way further down, I feel like, than it normally does. But a lot of spread there. And then again, the top of the, the recruiting, Bama, Texas, Ohio State, Oklahoma. It's a pretty uh, blue blood top four. Old Miss, Florida, Texas A&M, Penn State, USC, and Nebraska rounding out that top 10. So let's go ahead and see who we have. So we'll look here and I want to mention again uh, that uh, this is not me trying to shill. This is just me getting information out there for anybody that's interested. We unlocked memberships on the channel. So thank you guys for that. That's awesome. Um, and if anybody's interested starting at tier two and going up, uh, you will have the opportunity every off season or at the start of every season, really to name a recruit. Um, I won't allow any sort of meme names, you know, no Hugh Janus or like Mike Hawk or something like that. Um, but you know, if you want to name it after yourself, or if you have a name that you always name it, you, like you're, you're my players or something, you can hop in line for that. Um, it's a first come first serve. So you gotta, uh, you know, be ready. I will post a members only community post as well as uh, notifying every person who's in discord, which members get a specific role in the discord that you can only get by being a member. So there'll be a couple different ways that I can ping people to let them know when you can submit those names. But again, it will be first come first serve. So we've got it sorted by overall. These are our recruits. If anybody's interested in doing that, uh, I know that we will have at least one recruit named, but just scrolling through to show what we've got. And uh, I see a decent amount of offensive linemen, which I like. I'm proud that we managed to do that and a solid amount of defensive linemen as well which are always problems for me we got a fullback he's not the best but he's there we got a quarterback we got some good wide receivers and we got roger reed who we can plug in into what i think is going to be a pretty weak secondary this uh next season and we can look now i don't think that these have updated but if they have uh, these are our recruiting grades or whatever you would call them so Hopefully these will continue to be uh, on the move upward. And now we can go ahead and advance our way towards position changes. We will be making a few of those and uh, I'll see what we what we can do. At least we keep our offensive backfield in Grayson and Reese, the junior and senior. Uh, Grayson's an 87 overall right now. He's just going to get better. So we have him for... You know, at least that one more year, which will be very nice. But as it stands, we'll go ahead and see what we can change. We do have one fullback. What I'm looking at here is maybe, can we create a second fullback? And the answer is no. Uh, nobody's good enough to play fullback, so we're just going to have one fullback on the roster, which isn't a big deal. JJ Barr hopefully will progress well enough. Wide receiver-wise, we have plenty to work with. We return uh, Aaron Bedgood, which is great, and Dion Fountain, and Tyson Mobley. Uh, Marquise Jackson is the guy transferring in, but he'll have to sit for a year. So we're in a decent spot, all things considered. At tackle, we're looking good, or at least left tackle. How are we at right tackle? Plenty of depth. Guards, we have three and three, and we have four centers. This is fantastic. Uh, it might seem like we have too much offensive line depth right now, but that means that we're going to be able to do a lot of red shirting. Um, oh, I didn't even notice. Clayton Miller is from Conway, South Carolina. So literally from our backyard. So that's a, a nice pickup to have. You never want to lose kids that grew up in the city that you play in. But now we'll just see, is there a depth thing? 69 to 67, 75, 74. So that might be a change. 73, 76, 74. So we're going to take one of the right tackles in Isaac uh, Wusuapia. Move him to left tackle. We'll then move Gamara Kelly over back to the right side. So just getting a better starter on the left side of the line. And we're going to actually change Donnell Wilson, our junior left guard, to center. That'll make him 75 overall. That'll give us a little bit better center depth. And we're going to move Clayton Miller back to that left guard spot just to continue to make sure that we have uh, decent depth at all the positions. And again, some of these guys might have to give a cut. 
Left end, we have a bunch of guys. Right end, we have uh, one fewer. So let's see, 76 to 72 overall. That's 79 to 73. So yeah, it looks pretty fine. We'll just go ahead and move this guy over. Good depth for the most part. Uh, defensive tackle, we have a lot of freaking talent. In fact, we have so much. We might be switching to a 4-3 this next season. We'll see. Uh, how about our linebackers? Not the craziest amount of depth, but from the left side, we're going to move Brown over to the right. And we're going to go to the right, and we're going to bring Charles Steele, one hell of a name, over to the left. Just again to balance out overalls at corner. We're looking not great. Thank goodness we pick up Roger Reed. He'll come in as a Juco Jr. and immediately be the best player on the team. That is pending training, of course. Uh, and the safeties, we definitely need to find something. Aaron Diggs right now is starting, and that's not necessarily great for us. So the last thing that we'll move, as we've changed a couple corners to safeties, is we're going to move uh, Mateo Sudipo, who was a corner, I think, at 63 overall. He jumped up to 71 at free safety, but... We'll bring him back down to 69 overall at strong safety. That'll give us a little bit more depth. I think Diggs still will be starting, so we might have to change up some other stuff. Kicking, we've got Bryant McIntyre. And punting, we've got Marcus Frederick. So we did get some guys, and we had no athletes picked up at all this season. So all the position changes, pretty easy to do, but they're done now, and we can go and see how well they train up here. Kind of expecting Grayson McCall to be a 92 overall. He's a 90. Only went up three. I don't like that. He got a little bit quicker. How is his passing? As we'll just look at quarterback stuff for now. How much better did it get? And how is, uh, is Fred Payton a senior? Ooh. Two red shirt senior quarterbacks behind him. And then David Williams. So David's going to be getting red shirted for sure. No, he already is. Well, whoever the freshman that we brought in is going to get red shirted. And Grayson's throw power went up one, and his accuracy went up four. So, very mediocre. I actually do like David Williams in terms of a passer. He is a pocket passer, so not very quick, but he's got a decent arm. At running back, Reese White goes up six to an 86, 91 speed, 97 acceleration. And then uh, his backups around him are okay. Uh, but just in general, that's pretty solid improvement wide receiver-wise. Uh, Marquise Jackson and Aaron Bedgood are looking okay. Marquise, again, the uh, transfer. So he's 84 overall, but he's going to have to sit out, although he's going to be very good when he does get to play. 96 speed, 91 acceleration for him. Aaron Bedgood, low on the speed, high on the acceleration. In fact, that's all of our uh, main wideouts here. Deion Fountain may be the quickest of the bunch. The tight ends go up a decent amount. Offensive line is looking better than it was. I'm a little bit less worried about it now after seeing the training. Defensive tackle, uh, we have so much talent there, uh, especially for us. Uh, linebacker core, maybe a little bit better. Secondary, a little bit better than I expected it to be. And ooh, how, how about that one? Uh, Aaron Diggs, 91 speed, 94 acceleration. He, I don't think, is going to be our return man this season. We'll advance now towards our uh, cutting. Try to get rid of some, some fat and hope that this just goes all right. Only three players to, to cut. This is actually fantastic. Tempted to cut one of our uh, two senior quarterbacks. Maybe both of them. But I think just in general, uh, I'm going to get rid of Bryce Carpenter. A kid from Venice, Florida, which is where Javon Hiley is from, I think. Believe it or not. I remember reading Venice when, when he got drafted. But uh, we don't need players from Florida so we're not worried about losing the pipeline and he's a senior I like Fred Payton more than him um and if Grayson gets injured it's Fred coming in but then we also have a red shirt freshman and a red just a true freshman behind him so unfortunately Bryce is going to be gone immediately um and then elsewhere I'm not sure what else we really would want to cut I'm gonna keep all of our wide receivers just because I don't think that we need to get rid of them and in fact I'm tempted to cut a defensive tackle but we just have so many of them uh, and they're also good so maybe we just go ahead and see who's the worst player on the team uh, Xavier Drew at outside linebacker 60 overall we've got a right tackle at 60 overall that might be the one it's going to be either the right tackle yeah it's I think it's just going to be the right tackle let's let's go in and look 
Um, I'm blind. I can't read. RT. Matt Hodges. He was a pickup that I, I, he's one of those guys that I think I added to the board and then offered him a scholarship and then realized that he was 60 overall afterwards. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you could go back and find that. So we're going to cut him. And that leaves one more spot to get cut. And I was going to say, let's go ahead and cut Clayton Miller, the uh, left guard. But he's the kid from Conway, our hometown. So I can't do that. We, we could never live it down. Instead, I think we'll go to right tackle again and get rid of Jamal Coley. It does kind of get a little bit wonky, I guess, with our tackle situation. But we have plenty of left tackles to fill the gaps. Um, so Jamal is going to be gone. Only 64 overall. Got to trim the fat. So again, we can advance to the next stage. And uh, I saw some um, questioning as to what the changes that we were going to make were. Some people were saying college football playoff. Unfortunately, that's a little bit too difficult to implement. And the mod makers haven't done it yet either. So it's not the college football playoff. Although, man, I would love it. Instead... While we have this ability to reset our coach's skill tree, that's not what we're excited about. We are making the move alongside another team. Well, not the other team's not coming with us, but we are leaving the Sun Belt and we are going to go into the ACC. Uh, we're going to go, of course, we're Coastal Carolina. We will go into the Coastal Division. Uh, and the other team, maybe not quite along the Atlantic Coast, but we'll go up. To the independence and it's about time they finally fully join the conference notre dame is going to join as well to make sure that we have an even amount of teams only two independents left the Sun Belt, a little bit small with only nine teams now but that happens and let's take a look at our new acc we will be in division with duke georgia tech number one miami who just won the natty uh north carolina pitt virginia and virginia tech the conference was pretty strong. It actually gets stronger. We come in as a ranked team, the fourth highest ranked team in the conference. Um, and I think that we were struggling to win some games in the Sun Belt. But uh, hey, we won the conference. They extended the invitation. We're going to accept it because that's a lot of extra exposure. And that'll help us actually pick up recruits as well. And uh, we just got to hope that those close games, we can continue to win. So we have joined a new conference. Uh, hopefully you guys think that that's not a terrible idea. And we're actually going to do some resetting of skill trees here. So obviously right off the bat, go with the unlocks. We're going to go one with the lock or two in the locksmith. Uh, and then we're going to start three into the opener. And I think that we might go two into royal treatment. Or maybe we just go into the, we'll go one into each. One into closer, one into royal treatment. That opens up the kitchen sink. So we can continue to do that and that'll eventually get us to the point where we can give a player 700 points as opposed to 500 a week um i think that we're fine where we are with chad stags he's only level four close to level five but there's not a whole lot that we can do there and honestly uh we're actually going to reset this i want that extra stamina on the offensive side of the ball we'll up grayson make him better and we'll go ahead and go daylight until the lineman stuff levels up and then air traffic control. And our last one, we'll, we'll continue to up that impact blocking, but just a, a little bit of a reset on the skill tree for Bodie Reader. I'm glad that he stayed with us. And with that step done, we can move forward. We're not going to change any bull tines or anything, but we can move forward to the preseason. Oh man, let's, uh, let's hope for the best here because we're going to get into the recruiting now as well. But, of course, before we do that, I always like to go through and finish everything else, redshirt my players, set my depth chart, and hope for the best. Again, redshirting, we're just going to look for a lot of freshmen to redshirt wherever we can. We have some wide receivers, and we're going to sit, honestly, three of these guys, all three of these freshmen, we're going to sit. We're going to have everybody on this team is going to be a, uh, a red shirt player, and we will be able to keep every single one of these for next season. So let's just hope that we don't have any transfers. At left tackle, we're going to sit the 67 overall freshman, Adam Hill. At left guard, we'll sit Clayton Miller, that kid from Conway. The right guard spot, we can sit Antoine Horton. Can't necessarily sit Cameron Stewart, which sucks. He is our senior, 81 overall, but Mara Kelly's just not quite there. At left end, obviously, I'm not sitting the true sophomore, Sidney McRae, 81 overall for him. Instead, we'll sit Craig Thomas for his first season. 
right end I'm not going to touch. Devon Bomar played a ton for us last year. Uh, but Ashton Keith coming in, the, the new crazy recruit is actually better than him and will be starting at that right end spot. Uh, defensive tackle-wise, we I don't think we really touched this. Joel Hall played a ton last year, but I don't know. Let's see, John Taylor's the transfer, so he's not going to play. And Rashad Chaney will probably play alongside Joel Hall, and then we'll sit uh, Wendell Whitlock. But again, I think that we're switching probably to the 4-3 uh, this season. Won't sit any linebackers because we don't have the depth. Don't have the depth at corner to do it either. But free safety, I think we can get away with sitting Sean Franklin. And that's going to be it for our red shirting. That's not going to change anything with our depth chart. So we'll just make sure, scroll through that stuff is the way we, that we like it. And the one thing that will change actually is the two-time returner of the year is no longer going to be returning kicks for us. Uh, he's just not the quickest guy out there anymore. Instead, we have... I don't necessarily want Reese to take them because it'll tire him out. But we have backups, so Reese is the fastest player. And he's going to become our return man. Um, Aaron Diggs will still be out there, but he's not going to be returning the ball. He'll just be kind of our backup on those plays, maybe setting a few blocks. But I think that uh, that's just going to set it for us. It's nothing crazy, but, you know, it's a shame. He's just not quite quick enough. And, and the big, the bigger reason why we're not going to put him out there is just because he's our starting strong safety. And we can't afford to allow him to use that extra stamina uh, returning kickoffs. The other thing that we'll be changing is at kicker, we will be putting in our punter, Marcus Frederick, because Bryant McIntyre... Uh, only has 62 kick power, and we value kick power a lot more than kick accuracy, but just in general, he's better. Let's go ahead and do custom schedules. Um, this might be a thing that we might look towards uh, using you guys to figure out in the future, but for this season, I'm going to decide a few games. And we're having to open up the season uh, week one and week two in conference. Uh, both home games against NC State and then Pitt before we let's see they auto have us at texas we'll play that we'll play that it's a tough game for us on the road week four but i think i'm gonna take a bye week three and then get rid of uh, a late bye no i don't like that so now instead we'll face texas week three on the road we have an a plus strength the schedule right now by the way and then we'll take the bye that way we get three games before our first bye so we get a little bit more rest out of it uh, before some conference stuff. And then we have New Mexico. So maybe I continue to change things up here. So again, instead of taking a bye week four, we can move it back to week six, which I prefer. And we will go, let's see, out of conference, who are we playing? I want a decent, maybe another a G5 out of conference game, something that allows us to play, preferably a team that's been updated. You know what? Have we played BYU? No. We haven't. So we're going to play BYU as our out-of-conference. We'll have them come to us because we, we need to have an out-of-conference game uh, at home. And so that's a nice updated independent team. But uh, technically, I would consider them kind of G5. And then we have one more spot. Now we have a buy at the end of the season. We've got one here at week 6 and one in week 10. We have to take a game in one of these I don't like playing FCS teams, although, in case you were wondering, they have updated all the FCS teams so that they kind of are representative of, uh, I think it's supposed to be of like a real life team. Like I think FCS Northwest, they're called like the Stampede or something now. Um, and so it's like kind of representative of like North Dakota State. And I think Midwest might be maybe like Montana, but they're, that's, a, that's a cool little update. And at this point, since our by we're like we're looking at week six here is pretty late there's not a crazy amount of uh teams for us to choose from i want to choose a team that we haven't played we could do something like a mississippi state i'd like it to be power five maybe Ole miss it's a tough game um they've got those powder blues texas a&m and i've any meeny miny mode it and it's going to be Ole miss that we play <laughs> We're going to go on the road for that one. This is going to be a tough schedule. Right off the bat, the number four team, the number 15, 9, 22, and 14 all on the schedule. And then not to mention that we have to play in a new conference that's definitely a step up 
from where we were at. So we've got our schedule set now. Let's go ahead and get into our recruiting. Find some players and see what we can get. So we'll take a look at the my school stuff. I know for a fact one thing will have changed and it's the conference pres prestige. I think we were a B or a B minus or a C minus or something with the Sun Belt. I mean, it must be lower now because we're a B plus uh, here in the ACC. So that gives us some extra points. Championship contender rating has gone up. That's nice. We just need the rest of the stuff. Thankfully, uh, our coach stability will go up a decent amount because we've kept some of our guys around. We're not at risk of losing any pipeline stuff. And we don't really have any crazy needs. Secondary uh, would be nice. Uh, our linebacker core, I think we're okay elsewhere. And then, um, I mean, we can always improve both lines. Uh, and who knows, maybe we find a star for our quarterback or running back position. I'm going to go where I always go first, though. It's the top 100. Is there a player in here that cares about us? There's three of them. That's great news. Uh, I assume that means that we have decent pitch info. So we're going to try to go for these and just see what happens. Uh, Samson Henley, an athlete. 44840. Not the strongest guy, but he likes us quite a bit. A wide receiver in Clarence Pugh, a 44640, a little bit quicker. Um, is that a, what is that? B speed, B acceleration. We are fifth on his board. That's a five star. And the other four star outside linebacker, which is a thing that we want. Marcus Hall, 665 on the squat, 425 on the bench, and he still runs a 4640. So that's a, the number two outside linebacker, a very solid player. So we've added three. And now what I like to do is we'll just search. And this is just to get rid of deal breaker players because I don't like that. But we'll look through everybody. And right off the bat, of course, we want to look at guys who are interested in us, in which there's going to be a lot of them, uh, including right off the bat, Anthony Outlaw, the number 15 quarterback in the country. 6'5", 214 pounds. He's a scrambler. He runs a 4'8", which is pretty quick. I mean, it's no 4'5 uh, or, or quicker or something. Uh, he's pretty strong. He likes us most. How's his throwing? Uh, oops, that's not the right guy. B, throw power, C, throw accuracy. And I like the throw power more typically. This might be our guy. Let's add him to the board while we're, while we're looking at him. But what I really like to do is we go and we try to grab a couple of the fastest players off the board. And then a couple of the strongest guys on the bench and a couple of the strongest guys on the squad. And then we'll add guys that are interested in us. I'm going to go ahead and fill this out and then uh, we'll start scouting guys. So we are not at risk of losing pipelines again this year, which is great. And we've gone ahead and looked a decent ways around the country. A couple of kids from Texas. We've looked into California, Hawaii, up along the East Coast, but a ton in Florida as well. And with our board now, we can go ahead and start to scout some of these guys. I'm going to go by overall. There is a ridiculous amount of really good players on this board. I might be getting incredibly greedy, but we're going to go for this a lot. 81 overall is Scott Robinson, the tackle, 85 pass block, 84 run, 84 impact. That's ridiculous. What was his strength? 85 with good acceleration. How about Robert Gray? Goes up to 80, 80 pass, 86 run, 80 impact. This is crazy. Brian Hoare, 96 speed, 90 acceleration with 88 zone coverage for the quarter. This linebacker, pretty quick. He can tackle pretty well. He's just like, he's a very solid all around linebacker. Oh my gosh, Jeff Lee goes up. And this just continues to be incredible. Ryan Dodds goes up. He's really quick. He's got decent coverage, but he can tackle really well. 84 tackle, we need that. Clarence Pugh, the wide receiver, not the quickest, but 93 carrying is pretty nice. Uh, I don't know, I guess uh, decent route running and spectacular catch. Not, not the best we've ever seen. How about the guard? 76 overall. Oh no, he doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> it's like... These are some incredible players. 98 speed, 92 acceleration for the athlete, Christian Morrison. And his spectacular catch is 90. His coverage is pretty solid. His play recognition is decent. He can uh, jump. He can tackle. He can hit. He can. He, he, he's good. That's what I'm trying to get at. How about Eugene Harris, the tight end? The first player to go down, really, in overall goes down to 71, which is still great for a tight end for us. Um, his blocking seems pretty decent as well. The guard, Kyle Ross, goes up to a 76. You can see all these players that I added. I think that we have somewhat of a chance. And there's our first gem. 
Samson Henley, another 80 overall athlete. Two acceleration. His coverage seems great. He can catch as well. Uh, his hit power and tackle isn't great, so we can probably put him on. goodness we we i mean if we don't get at least a couple of those gems i'm gonna be very disappointed but that's going to be it for uh for our preseason let's go ahead and advance towards the regular season and if you've made it this far through this video i want to say you're a real one because no gameplay and you've made it this far that's fantastic you know a little bit maybe of a shorter episode and it's all menu but I, this is like one of my favorite parts of the game is just going through, improving our team, getting to scout all these new recruits. And hopefully we might be ranked to start this season. I don't think so. Um, three preseason All-Americans, six preseason All-Conference players. And that's in the ACC as well. We found four busts and five gems. Great XP uh, as we will go in. And just as a preview here, we can look at the NC State game not going to be going in our favor we are a b minus team i don't know what the overall is we'll, we'll wait for that reveal but uh our man lee corso not going to be in our corner here we're not top 25 either but again that's not going to stay the only thing i want to look at here heisman watch who are they saying zach charbonnet that michigan running back ej smith the running back from stanford sean chambers at wyoming Brees Hall, unsurprisingly, from Iowa State. He's now a senior, 99 overall. Uh, so is Charbonnet. And uh, Sarah Doric Thompson, another 99 overall running back. Uh, he's out of Texas Tech. But man, oh man, am I excited to get this first game underway. Uh, unfortunately for you guys, that's going to have to wait until the next episode. Thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, please consider subscribing. We're at like a ridiculously high 85% of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed. If we could get that number closer to 50, I would be ecstatic, but I appreciate it anytime that somebody comes in and watches one of these videos. Also hit the like button, and while you're down near the description, go ahead and check out some of the links that we have in there. Uh, one is for our Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, where we play a lot of non-NCA related uh, gaming content. There's also links to my Twitter and our community Discord, where again, if you uh, decide to become a member, you want to join that so that you can get your exclusive role on the server. There's also a link down there to get to the college football revamp mod if you're wanting it for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.